guys, it's Morgan coming to you with another schlag uh, from Highland Cycles. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope you guys have liked the race videos from the Shady Burrow Enduro. Uh, we had an absolute blast. If you haven't checked those out yet, I'll put cards right up here for them. Uh, would love for you to check it out and see what I do when I go have fun and race dirt bikes. It's a lot of fun. Um, it is going to be a super short week this week. It's already actually at the end of Tuesday. Uh, it's been crazy uh, because Zach and I are leaving on Thursday for Idaho. So make sure if you like the stuff we're doing and go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Click that little notification bell so you know when we do new videos because we're going to the Stanley area, the Baumgardner campground specifically, uh, to ride for three full days in the mountains of Idaho up in the Sawtooths. It's going to be awesome. Uh, so what the schlag is mainly going to consist of is me working on my bike, getting it ready for the race. Uh, today, uh, Zach actually, oh, big big day actually, Zach got the pile of parts KX450 back together and running. Woo! That was awesome. Took forever. Uh, kept finding parts that were missing, things like that. So Zach got that done today. It's running. Um, it's still missing some stuff, but the guy has that stuff. Um, now, guys, uh, I will be checking in on this one. Uh, hopefully get some good video of this. Uh, but we are now working on the Honda that ate the screw finally and blew up the cylinder. If you remember that, and the head is all jacked. Yeah. Um, if you haven't seen that original video, I'll put a card up here for that. Um, but yeah, we got the heart out of the bike, and now he is going to be splitting the cases, put a new crank, new cylinder, new head, new piston. New, 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 new things. Lots of new things. Um, and yeah, he's going to be working on that. Uh, I'm rehabbing my uh, KTM 250 after now two races. So I'll kind of go over what we're going to do with that. Um, first things first, oil change, air filter. The air filter was disgusting because uh, I raced two days on it in um, South Fork. And I forgot to bring an extra one. So it has two full days of racing on it. That's too much but it didn't get anything on the wrong side of the filter, so that's good. Um, so after those, like, because I raced it at the Snowshoe Enduro, well, that was awesome. Then I raced it two days in South Fork without doing a whole lot to it. I, I uh, cleaned the air filter between times, but I did not change the oil. I put the Henson clutch in it. I'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, but other than that, I just kind of parked it and rode the YZ in between. So now what I'm gonna do to get it ready for a three-day adventure in Idaho is I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna to touch all the nuts and bolts. I'm gonna hit the subframe bolts, the um, axle nuts, both of them, pinch bolts, everything on around it. I even hit the bolts on the exhaust. Uh, I'm going to obviously lube and adjust the chain, make sure that's good. I'm probably not gonna put tires on it. I was going to, um, but honestly, I just don't want to. It's got new nitro mousses in it um, because Thank you, Nitro Moose. Thank you, Jeff at Nitro Moose for that. I really appreciate that, but they've been helping me out with mooses. So the mooses are in good shape. The tires really aren't bad. Take a look at this M59. Um, that's after, oh, uh, how long? We got uh, 85 miles and then two, so almost 300 miles of racing. And that's what that tire looks like. So it actually looks really good. Uh, checking wheel bearings, they're all good. Um, the Bridgestone X30 on the back is looking a little rough, um, but not horrible. I don't know. I don't know. I might just run it. Uh, guys, what do you think? Um, by the time you see this, it'll be too late. <laughs> I will have already made my decision. Um, I don't know. I might put a new rear tire on it uh, tomorrow. I'm actually out of tires right now because of the whole COVID thing. Trying to keep tires and things in stock has been rough, but they should hopefully be here tomorrow. I hope, um, but we'll see. Uh, obviously, like I said, chain, gonna go through, I'm gonna hit all my pivot points. So one thing I like to do is right here is a pivot point, right here is a pivot point. Um, my levers are pivot points, my other foot peg, all that stuff. I like to go through with that spray grease and hit those things so that they're nice and lubed up. Um, the clutch performed perfectly, so we're all good. I'll check all my uh, settings on my suspension. That was perfect, by the way. Thank you, Brady. Um, yeah, so uh, changing the oil, by the way. So that is the oil from uh, two full 
race, well, three days of racing. It looks really pretty stinking good. Um, and two days on a brand new clutch. So I think that clutch is doing great. It didn't really even show any signs of like breaking in. Um, Go check the coolant, all that stuff. Make sure she's ready to go. Uh, then we'll be ready to go to Idaho. I cleaned and rebuilt the carburetor on another Suzuki DR650. Uh, not the one that was sitting over here forever. By the way, look at that. Isn't that nice? Nice and clean <laughs> over here. Um, but yeah, uh, rebuilt that. Oh, there's my son's YZ125. That is coming, guys, I know. Um, but, oh, so the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show you guys, I'll go in depth on this one. Um, I'll quit talking here a little bit and show you some actual work, but is I run the motor minded headlight uh, set up. It's Baja Designs headlight with the motor minded bracket and all that. Um, I actually broke the bracket. Where is it? Anyway, down in there I broke it. Um, so Chris at motor minded, thank you very much. He sent me a brand new warrantied bracket, but um, the reason that that broke is I run it um, I have been running it just on the straps on the thing and it moves and jiggles a lot as I bounce through and whatever So I think that's why it broke. So I got a new bracket. He gave me that but then I bought the super mount So I'll show you how that works um, on there uh, I think that's gonna make it a lot more solid and a lot better So um, I'm gonna get back to work here guys, and I'll check in when I get to something cool All right guys, so I'm working on the super mount. I think this thing's pretty cool um, I installed one on a different bike, and it was different uh, the way it worked uh, it was it was pretty slick, but it I don't know it kind of was a pain in the butt to mount this one seems really cool So um, let me just kind of show you what's going on here So this piece back in here is the super mount and it's sweet. It, it's mounted. It's got all the Things set up, you know how you can mount this and whatever it's got little words on it <clears throat> for where things are supposed to go uh, so you get everything in the right place, but really all it does is it bolts right through here into the triple clamps, just like it's supposed to. Um, and then these bolts are for these holes. So instead of the rubber things holding on to it, um, it's going to be a super burly bolted on mount. So I'm going to keep going here. I'll show you what it looks like when I get it all done. All right, guys. So I'm getting closer here, but I just want to show you something super cool about uh, this motor minded super mount. So I bolted it all up. It's basically the same as what we just looked at, but um, I started getting the wires run and getting them where they needed to go. And I just noticed, like, let's say, if I have one criticism, let's stop. The instructions for this thing are terrible and the pictures and the instructions are terrible. So Chris, your product is awesome. It always has been, but honestly, the instructions <laughs> are not awesome. Um, I mean, they're fine. I can figure it out, but <clears throat> it, the photos could be a lot better. But anyway, that aside, I'd still highly recommend this uh, product. Um, it's got these super cool, like, holes. Let me see if I can get in tight here. Um, going around so that you can uh, zip tie the wire loom out of the way and keep it all nice and happy. And that is awesome. Super stoked about that. So now it's all clean. I'm going to take the headlight, put it on here, bolt it up, and I think we're good to go. This thing is awesome. Right on, man. It's uh, done. So check it out. Nice and clean. Just a bolt right through there. Now this thing is super burly. Isn't going to move as I bounce down the trail. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with that. Thanks, Chris. That is a super cool mount. Guys, I highly recommend that. If you've got a motor-minded light that you're using currently the uh, rubber straps i ditch that thing get this piece it just makes everything way cleaner everything's way more organized back in there um yeah super happy with that i'm really really happy um yes i guess if you want to say a downside to it um you are gonna have to clip these zip ties every time you do forks um but you know big deal that's like every 40 50 hours <clears throat> no big deal uh yeah so um, now I gotta pour oil back in this thing. I'm gonna fire it up, make sure the light's working, um, and all that is good. I gotta get my air filter, uh, put that in there, get an extra one, oil it up. Uh, then I think we'll be pretty close. I might, like I said, still might put a uh, rear tire on it. We'll see. I'm not sure. All right, guys. So I almost got Daisy ready to rock and roll. Um, I don't think I'm gonna put tires on it because I really don't even have any tires. I'm totally out. I don't know if UPS is bringing me tires today or not. So we're gonna run with these tires, which is fine. They're in great shape. 
be good. Uh, the last thing we've got to do, though, because as my friend Jeff Booker says, there are no small loops in Idaho. I have a big tank. Um, it's another half gallon. Whoa. Angry sheets. Okay. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> he's a little less angry today, everybody, because we're getting ready to leave for vacation. And he seems, he, look at him. He's even smiling. It's crazy. Um, so, yeah. Big tank going on right now. I'm pretty excited. Um, I've actually thought about this for a long time, but I've just been cheap and not done it. But, uh, like I said, my buddy Jeff was like, dude, there are no small loops in Idaho. Make sure you get enough gas on board. So... I'm going to slap this on here. I'll check in and show you guys what it looks like when we get done. All right, guys. Check it out. Sherbus. Big tank on the bike. Obvious massive difference is this part that might hit me in the family jewels if I slide forward too hard. But um, I'm stoked to hopefully not have to walk if i got enough gas on board. I think it's ready. Oil's changed. Air filter's clean. Ready to rock and roll. Um... Yeah, everything's ready to go. It performed perfectly uh, this last weekend riding, so um, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't again. Um, super mounts on. Again, thanks, Moto Minded. Chris, that thing is really burly. I like that a lot. And, yeah, I think we're good to go. If anything changes, if I decide to change tires, I'll check in with you guys, but uh, I think we're good. Now I have to go change tires on customer stuff um, so I can get all that done. we got a ton of work do today before we leave um but yeah right on all right guys so the next project is this v-strom i believe it is a yeah v-strom 1000 uh and we were putting a stator in it i already checked it um no it's been weeks ago actually when i ordered the part that took forever to get here but checked it out made sure it was the stator stator's not producing enough electricity i think it's only making like six volts uh so i'm gonna put a stator in it new gasket and check it all out so i'll bring you along on that journey quick learning session here uh the stator is the thing that makes electricity on your motorcycle uh, if you don't know that um it's like an alternator except for that it is actually part of the motor it's on the motor uh it's right down here on the left side on almost every bike uh right behind this cover and it consists of a stator which is a whole bunch of coils of wire wound around poles um, and then a flywheel that spins around that because the way you make electricity even in a giant coal burning power plant is you spin magnets past coils of wire um, and the magic then happens honestly I don't even know how someone figured out that the first time maybe someone here knows comment below if you know uh, who the first person was to swing a magnet past a coil of wire and see electricity happen um, but that's how they make it uh, it's just a different ways of spinning it right so coal uses uh, coal to burn fire that heats water to make steam to spin generators. Uh, hydroelectric spins generators, wind spins gen Anyway, they all spin things, uh, magnets past coils of wire. So that's how it works on a motorcycle. Uh, when we get in there, I'll show you exactly what that looks like. Hard, sometimes the bar eats you. <laughs> right on, guys. So super stoked um, that, I mean, I already checked the stator. It definitely checked out bad and all that stuff, but check it out. It's always good to verify your findings. If you look right in here, see all the burntness? That is not good. That means it's not working. So, super happy. Um, but let me go through again how this works. It's pretty cool. So, there are three windings of wires around three separate coils. Now, they're wrapped around lots of different poles, but they're three actual separate coils of wire they come out right here. There's the the leads out for charging. Right here, these on the inside of this flywheel are magnets. And as, this is hooked directly to the crankshaft. And as that thing spins, it goes around these wires and makes electricity. That sends AC electricity, alternating current, up and over to the regulator rectifier. The regulator rectifier has a series of diodes and stuff like that in it. So as the, electric, the AC current goes in, it gets trans transformed or changed into DC or direct current um, and then regulated to keep it at like 14 and a half volts at the high end to then charge the battery. So that's how that works. Um, also, if you look right here, that is the pulser coil. Um, that is the uh, basically the crank position sensor. 
uh, tells the um, computer, the CDI box, where it is in the stroke and tells it when to fire. Um, it's got this little uh, nubbin that swings past it that it senses, tells it when to fire. Ah. Tell, you know, tells it when to fire and then it goes. So it's pretty cool. Um, really happy that that's that easy to get off. I just gotta see if I can unplug it easily. Oh, without having to take too much stuff off and then we'll put a new one in it, put it back together and be good to go. All right guys, so putting the stator, got the old stator out. It's just cooked and gnarly. Um, but as you can see, I had to cut these wires because the new stator we got is from Rick's and Rick's makes good stators. We haven't had any problems, especially just the charging ones. Uh, no issues, but you gotta wire them in. Um, they don't come with the pulser and all that stuff. But fortunately this bike runs, so we know that's not the issue, just not charging the battery. So start these wires together, get this all back together and put it together and make sure it works good. All right, got the stator in. Now let's check and see if it's charging. Looks good to me, 13 volts at idle. Good to go. So now I gotta full thrust this thing back together, uh, take it for a test drive, make sure everything's good, and then we'll move on to the next thing. All right, guys. Last project for the Schlag is putting a clutch cover gasket on this XT225, uh, also known as the. I'm not gonna say it. Comment below if you know what else they call these things. Um, it's a certain year range, but every sometimes they anyway. Other countries they call them something. I'm not gonna say what it is. Comment below if you know what it is. Um, but yeah, uh, clutch cover gas is leaking. We got a new one, gonna slap that on there and then we'll be done for the week and we're going to Idaho to go riding. So make sure you stay tuned for those videos. They're gonna be awesome. All right on guys, that's it for the schlog. That's it for the week. Zach, that guy, and I are heading to Idaho tomorrow morning, super duper early to go ride dirt bikes in the Sawtooth Mountains. It's gonna be so much fun. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to check out those videos. We'll have at least three, maybe a thousand. I don't know. It's going to be a ton of fun. We're going to ride in the rocks and crash and hopefully not break too much stuff. Uh, Zach will be wheeling everywhere. I can guarantee you that. He will not have the front wheel on the ground. It's part of the deal. If he does, that's it. Loses the job. Anyway, <laughs> I love you guys so much. I uh, really appreciate you watching these things and sticking around. Uh, thank you so much to everybody out there who pays attention to our stuff. Um, I love you guys. Get out, spread the gospel of two wheels. And as always, I really hope that what we're doing here at Highland Cycles is inspiring you guys to work on and more importantly, get out and ride your dirt bikes.